Test. There it goes, right there. He got the right button. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Test, test one, two, three. song because they were singing along. Which one you want next?
Okay. How long has it been? How long has it been since you talked to the Lord and told him your heart's hidden secrets? How long since you prayed? How long since you stayed on your knees to the light shone through? How long has it been since your mind felt at ease? How long since your heart knew no burden? Can you call him your friend? How long has it been since you knew that he cared for you? How long has it been since you knelt by your bed and prayed to the Lord up in heaven? How long since you knew that he'd answer you and would keep you the long night through? How long has it been since you woke with the dawn and felt this day is worth living can you call him your friend how long has it been since you knew that he cared for you how long has it been since you knew that he cared for you Probably a lot of you will know this next one. Soft as the voice of an angel Breathing a lesson unheard Hope with gentle persuasion Whisper her comfort in word. Wait till the darkness is over. Wait till the tempest is done. Hope for the sunshine tomorrow. After the shower is gone. Whisper in hope, oh how welcome the voice making my heart in its sorrow rejoice. If in the dust of the twilight Dim be the region afar Will not the deepening darkness Brighten the shimmering star Then when the night is upon us why should the heart sink away when the dark midnight is over? Watch for the breaking of day. Whisper in hope, oh how well come the voice. May
All right. There we go. Let there be sound, and there was sound. That's in Genesis chapter. <laughs> I don't know where that's at. Hey, we'll get started with our uh, prayer request <laughs> and get get rolling. Thank God he answers prayer. What a good-looking crowd tonight. Amen. If I call you good-looking, everybody's got to say amen. amen. What a good-looking crowd tonight. Amen. Now we're woke up. We're full. See, we, we had something to eat there. Miss Allison brought me something to eat back there, and I was so thankful. Only thing, I didn't have anything to drink. So when I come out of there, I looked like a camel. I was looking for some water. People were saying hi, and I was waving, but I had my mind on that water. <laughs> I got me a cup of water. Now I'm good to go. We'll go down our prayer request. Uh, Patrice and Jimmy Wagstaff, James Jordan, DJ Paul Kent. Bobby Conte, I hope I said that right. The Lord knows if I did mess it up. But Mr. Bobby, Debbie Freeman, Charla James family, Alice Boykin, Unspoken, Chet and Allison. Thank you for your prayers for us. We know every bump in Highway 63. <laughs> we watched the road construction on 69. We, we, we know... Uh, we're, we're thankful that the Lord watches over us and protects us. I'm always looking for deer. She's looking at them so we don't hit them, and I'm looking to see if they're rutting or not, chasing does, all right? <laughs> but we're still watching deer, amen. <laughs> Mr. Marvin, continued recovery, Neva and Harlan, Billy Morgan, Tracy White, Travis Primrose, Jamie Moran, Tommy Boykin, and we'll open it up. Who's got a, Allison, Gwen, and Funkin? All right, Renee Hitman. Who else we got? Somebody writing those down, because if I can get them to Rachel, I guess. Okay, Ari, that's good. Who else we got? Renee and Gwen and Funkin. We talked to Gwen and them the other day. They're going to doctors a lot, but they're doing good. It's funny, and the people we talk to, you know, they'll say, boy, I enjoyed that service the other day. You know, they watch from home, so I'm thankful. James? That's right, Miss Kim. Wyatt? Her tests are Friday. Wes? Okay, Wes, all right, got that. Mr. Marvin? Charlotte? Woolum. W-O-L-L-E-M. Scott. That's right, Mr. Bill. Is he? I didn't know that. Mr. Bill Duncan's in the hospital, so pray for I'll try to remember to check on Miss Debbie too. Yes, ma'am, Miss Brenda? Kenny Sinclair. Yes, ma'am. All right. Miss Lori? Tanner Cox. How's the old knee going, Miss Lori? Huh? Are you doing any karate kicks over your head yet? Not quite. Hey, you're here and getting around. That's good. Miss Joyce? Mr. Paul, amen. It's good to see you, Miss Joyce. You came to me, and we miss your smiling face. I like to see you during this thing, and you can praise the Lord like nobody else. Amen. But Mr. Paul, Miss Donna, okay, unspoken. C-O-M-T-E, yeah. That was a, a misprint there, C-O-M-T-E. All right, Miss Cheryl. What's the name? K. Walters. All right. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am, Miss Kay. Sheila. Sheena. Sheena. Beddingfield. All right. Miss George. Miss 
Hey, that's good. That's a praise report. Amen. We like a praise report mixed in. James? All right, Mr. Tommy. All right. Amen. Donna? Boston? Lofton. Robert Lofton. Percy Hamilton. All right. Anybody else? I won't miss nobody. Miss, miss Linda. Praise report. That's a blessing. Anybody else? Make sure Steve. Okay, the twenty seventh. Mr. Steve, all right. Speedy recovery. All right. We're ready to go to the Lord in prayer. All right. Lord, we just come to you tonight in Jesus' name. We thank you for meeting every need we have. But we know, Lord, that you are faithful and you are good. And we ask you, Lord, to meet every need here tonight. You know every name, every need, every situation. May you give people strength, healing, peace, and comfort. Lead and guide us, give us direction, give us wisdom, Lord. We pray for every need here tonight. Those that need healing, we know you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. Lord, you are our peace, you are our strength. We just ask you to work mightily on everybody's behalf. Lord, those that may be struggling in some area, may you give them strength and put the right people across their path to help them, Lord, and to speak life into them and to let our light shine for you. Use each one of us as a vessel for you and meet every need on this list in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to run through some announcements. I do have quite a few announcements. That's a, that's a, good, a good deal. Man, we had a lot going on Sunday. We got a lot done Sunday. It was a great service, wasn't it? On top of that, we had the Secret Sister deal going on. And uh, it's a blessing to have so much going on that runs over top of one another. Amen? <laughs> I have been to churches where the same ten people went to their car and twiddled their thumbs and trying to think of something to do. We don't, we're thankful that we have a lot going on. Amen? And uh, because we're excited, the more you know, we reach people. Did you know we had uh, at least 35 people at the new member class Sunday? But wasn't that great? That was... <clears throat> That was a blessing. We went to see Miss Patrice today and show her the rodeo poster that Miss Rachel has worked on. Our search secretary is doing a great job. And boy, Miss Patrice was excited about that poster. We put it in front of her, and boy, she smiled. She was ready to see it. So, uh, and <laughs> I was, we was telling her about the new members class, and she was really pumped about that. So, we, we had a good day and welcome all of our new people. Now, there's a lots of people that wasn't able to attend that I see new faces. So, just so you know, when your nose darkens the door of that church and you call this your home, you're, you're ours, amen. You're a member. You, you may not have went through the little class. It's just to get you involved, but pray about where God would, would want to use you And because uh, God's got you here for a purpose and a reason. But we had a, had a great membership class. We'll run through these announcements as quick as I can. I've got some people that probably need to share we, around the Christmas holidays. We have quite a bit going on. So, all right. Let's see. We don't pass the hat. You got the two wooden churches. That's where you give your tithes and offerings. And thank you for your faithful giving. We couldn't do what we do and reach people if we didn't do so. So take advantage of that if, if God puts it on your heart. And let's see. Stop by the sale barn after church if you want to see uh, there's Christmas gifts in there. If, if you get a shirt or a cap, they donate $5 back to the hospitality team who fed us tonight. Can I get an Amen. Thank you to the hospitality team. Men's, <laughs> hey, that got almost a standing ovation, right? We, if we wasn't so full, we would have stood up and clapped, but we sat down and done it. 
Men's prayer breakfast every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Nurseries available and provided. Buckaroos are upstairs and the youth are upstairs on Wednesday nights. You can hear them up there getting with it. Round pen, men's and women's every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, Mike Satterfield did a great job Sunday. Amen? Amen. All right, Chuck Wagon team, be praying about that. Anybody wants to get involved, Mr. Donnie's getting ready to get that thing launched off. December the 19th, not this Sunday, actually this Sunday will be our monthly planning meeting. So we encourage everybody that can come to that meeting. Uh, it just gives you an idea of what we got going on. So uh, come after church Sunday if you can. We'll feed you a little pizza afterwards. I almost forgot the pizza for the new members class. Amen. I'll tell you what happened. We was in such a bind. I told Allison during the announcements, we need pizza. And I went there and sat down, and all she said was, I, she didn't say, I love you, honey. She said, Kurt needs your credit card. <laughs> what do you think about that deal? <laughs> so, I love you too, honey. <laughs> Kurt needs your credit card. We appreciate Kurt going after that pizza at the last minute. He looked like, he, he, he looked like a Pony Express going after that pizza. But uh, this Sunday will be our leadership meeting. Please come if you can. December the 19th will be a Sunday. We'll do our Christmas potluck. And please, as many of you as can, dress up like Old Timey Day. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, looking forward to it. If you got any questions about Old Timey Day, holler at Miss Allison. Um, let's see. Need a second nursery worker? Thank God we had a backup nursery worker help us tonight. So we appreciate that. And if you have not filled out a green sheet to become a member, you can do that and drop it into wooden churches. Green sheet should be at the welcome desk. Uh, we got Scott and Sheila have a, make sure I say this right, a housewarming. It'll be December the 15th, next Wednesday, is that right? Uh, from 6 to 7 p.m. here in the, in the foyer. You register at Walmart or Walmart gift card. Scott said you could go to Cabela's or Bass Pro Shop if you wanted to as well. <laughs> That's Scott, Mr. Scott. Now, I need a, a, a lure or something for that. You know, I got some cats to put a lure in, all right? Just a joke, all right? But, hey, that's next Wednesday night uh, from 6 to 7. Make sure and uh, come join in that. We appreciate Scott and Sheila. Christmas uh, at JC3, Miss Allison. We've got the boot out tonight. Tonight and Sunday, if you want to participate, you do not have to, but if God puts you on your heart, we're trying to find a few needy kiddos that, that could use a, a little help at Christmas, and uh, we're going to be doing that. Miss Allison will set that boot out. There's no pressure to give to that, but if you want to be a part of it, you reap what you sow. If you want to sow some seed into that, hey, if God puts it on your heart, I promise you, he'll meet your needs, and, and it's going to happen either way. We're prepared, and we're excited about giving. It's more blessed to give than to receive. I love giving especially with the kiddos can i get a good amen all right youth december the 15th mr cody is going to take the kids out i've got a little flyer on that they'll give us a report on that uh miss melody i'm going to ask uh, miss melody stand up miss melody stand up and sing us a song like we talked about no no i'm, a, I'm kind of a joker but this is a serious matter I've got some of these. If you would give these out, Miss Melody's daughter, Jamie, um, has been diagnosed with stage four cancer, and so they're doing a fundraiser for her. How old is your daughter, Miss Melody? She's sixty. So we are putting her in our prayers. Make sure she's on that list. But we're they're they're doing, and Mr. Donnie's helping out a a benefit, uh, a fundraiser. It'll be out in front of AutoZone. And it'll be on Saturday. All the details are here. Miss Melody does need 1,000 cookies. And packaged in twos, right? So anybody that could help with cookies. I know Allison's going to bake some, different people. Uh, we need a sign-up list. Let's flip one of these over and write on that and put it, ma'am. Yeah, you can just flip it over and say cookie sign-up list. If anybody wants to do that, put your name and phone number. It's no big deal if you can't, but they're, they're going to have cookies, barbecue. It'll tell you everything about it. Miss Melody, you want to say anything? Kind of tell us what's going on, or did I do okay? You you sure you don't need nothing? I mean, we, we didn't. She's worked at AutoZone for 10 years. They're going to supply the, the food. 
And uh, Mr. Donnie and his crew, I think, is going to do some cooking. Is that right? And uh, we just need a few cookies. Anybody wants to help out or run by for the benefit? And uh, I think that's almost all of it, except Miss Cheryl. Do we have an announcement about? Uh, we got so much going on. I don't even remember what Miss uh, Charlotte's going to announce. <laughs> children's program and we also have a nursing home outreach deal okay um this is to the parents that have children that come to the buckaroo barn if your child is going to participate in our our christmas program um every wednesday night we practice but it will be december the 19th during the regular service and if they are going to participate i would like for you to stop and see either me or miss kayla before you leave tonight and let us know so we can get their names so we have costumes for everybody because there's some been coming and going and we're not sure um also where are those cards somewhere the cards up here. anyway on the front on the front desk out there there's a bunch of cards different christmas cards for our silver christmas for our seniors in the nursing home you can take one take two three or box there's some boxes and there's some more boxes but if you would uh, get one, write a, your special verse in it or a special note to somebody or something, and then return it to the box behind the desk or on the desk, and I'll pick them up. But we will be, uh, the 15th is the last day to get your stuff in if you're planning on donating anything for the senior, box, uh, senior gifts, too. Anything else? Okay. That's good. Thank you. Charlotte, we appreciate you. They're go-getters, amen? All right, how many of you know what a go-getter is? Make it happen, amen. <laughs> you know, there's a, you can find an excuse on every corner. Amen, there's always excuses, but go-getters, man, we make it happen. We need to be go-getters for Christ, amen? We need to be go-getters in our own life, but more importantly, we need to be go-getters for Jesus, amen? In other words, we keep uh, plowing and marching on, uh, even when life gets hard, we let our light shine for him. That was a lot of announcements, but we got a lot going on. Did I forget anything, Miss Alice? All right, Miss Charlotte covered all that. If you have your Bible, <coughs> let's open it up. And actually, to Romans chapter 5, and you can kind of hold your place there, and we'll get started. Uh, we've been talking about everybody here, and a lot of people watch online. Don't forget also, I've been doing about 6.30 to 6.45, I do a devotion every morning on Facebook Live. How many of you have been watching that a little bit? I do a devotion anyway from a Billy Graham devotion, and I thought, why not share it with the church? And man, God has blessed that thing. I was looking today, one day we had 169 people watch one, and then one day we had 420-something. So a lot of people, you know, it's just about a seven to ten minute devotion i didn't do it but mr graham done it you know if billy graham boy if he'd have just ever learned how to preach right <laughs> he's the greatest preacher ever lived in my book but he does these devotions and uh so i read them anyway so i started doing it live and dang man it, it's been a blessing i see people the other day you may stop at the gas station and i don't even know them and they say sure enjoyed that devotion this morning i'm like i got i've got to make sure i i act right amen <laughs> I do anyway. Now, if I got mad at the gas station, it would only be because of the price of diesel, amen. <laughs> and getting mad don't do any good. So, But anyway, tune in. You know, even if you sleep late or you schedule, you work nights, you can look at it at any time in the day. And uh, they're good little short devotions, yet pretty powerful. So uh, our lesson for the last few weeks we've been teaching on, I know you all are sick and tired of it and praying that I quit talking about it. But it is patience. And you know, one guy prayed one time, God, I want patience and I want it now. Don't, it don't bother God. You, you ever notice God's not intimidated by us? Lord, if you don't do this, oh, yeah, he's like, what are you going to do, boy? <laughs> and so he teaches us patience a lot of times. And I mean, through patience, we, we grow. We don't like to talk about it. I mean, the word patience is kind of scary. And the word grow is kind of scary. Amen? Because in order for us to grow, there's going to be a sacrifice. Amen? And I always refer it back to exercising or anything else. If you're going to grow and, 
and, and, and work out and get in shape to do something, man, there's a lot of sweat involved. There's a lot of, a lot of challenges involved, and, and you know, it, it, it doesn't just happen. There's no uh, easy button. Remember that commercial several years ago about the easy button? You think, man, I need to get in shape. Well, whoop, just push the easy button. How many of you, that don't work? <laughs> my, my easy button, <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> so patience is something that kind of intimidates us a little bit, but patience is a powerful tool in our walk with Christ. Uh, it's, it's, it's important to have patience. The more our patience develops, the more we are able to you know, bear fruit for the kingdom of God because there's those times that we have to trust him. I mean, if you do a study, you know, um, Joseph, when he was told, you know, you're going to do all these things, it was around 13 years before he actually was in charge in the land of Egypt. Everybody say 13 years. And you think, well, I bet old Joseph had a great life those 13 years. Oh, yeah, he really did. He had a coat of many colors. His brothers were jealous. Now, Joseph was a little cocky. None of us have ever been cocky, right? The older we get, the, the more humble we get, and the wiser we get. When we're young sometimes, even when we're not so young, we can still be cocky. I've learned to not be cocky if there's any way I can keep from it, because God has a way of, of getting our attention. Amen? <laughs> but <laughs> patience is something that's a powerful tool. And, but with patience, it takes time. Joseph wasn't living a beautiful life. His brothers were jealous of him. He was a cocky little little rascal. He gets stripped of his coat. They just they were going to kill him. And one brother said, let's don't kill him. Let's throw him in a pit. And so they threw him in a pit. And some Egyptians come by and said, they got a better idea. Let's sell him to the Egyptians. So he was sold into slavery. So he gets there, goes to work for a man named, y'all finish the story, Potiphar. And he's rocking along there and working for Potiphar. And Potiphar's wife made a pass at Joseph. He had nothing to do with that, but she was very vindictive. She tore his clothes and told her husband. She lied on Joseph and said, he made a pass at me. And so Potiphar freaks out and says, put him in prison. And so Joseph didn't, didn't do no wrong, but he was, you know, falsely accused now, so Joseph didn't have this perfect life during those 13 years. Then he goes to prison. And he was lied on, finds himself in prison. But somewhere in there, Joseph had patience. He knew God's promises for him. Uh, long story short, he was able to interpret dreams. He interprets a dream for a guy. Next thing he knows, he's standing before the leader of the land. And he interprets a dream for Pharaoh. And he is let out of prison. And next thing you know, he is second in command over that whole country. Can I get a good amen? And he was in charge of all the grain and the crops and all the things. And there was going to be a famine. And they prepared for the famine. And Joseph was a man of wisdom and insight. But everybody say 13 years. He, yes, he was second in charge. But there was at least, it may have been a little more, several years that he went through being lied on, sold by his brothers, uh, a slave working for the Egyptians. He's thrown in prison, lied on by Potiphar's wife. He's got all this going on, and he spends quite a bit of time, some years in prison for something he didn't do, and yet God delivered him out of that. So I believe Joseph learned a little bit about patience too. But because of his patience... In his good attitude, he ended up second in charge. And God sends his very own brothers before him that threw him in a pit and wanted to kill him. And the Bible says that Joseph went out behind where they were. He went, ran out the back of the building or wherever they were, and he wept. So he didn't have a lot of bitterness for his brothers. He forgave them. And everybody said, not always easy to forgive, but if you ever have trouble forgiving, read the story of Joseph. And Joseph blessed his brothers. Now, he did play, that's why I kind of like to play jokes, because Joseph did play a few pranks on his brothers. And you'll have to read it to study it out. But yet Joseph rose to the second in command because of his attitude, because of his patience, spending time in, in, 
in slavery, being lied on, thrown into a pit, but patience got him where he was, and he ended up second in charge in Egypt. And he took care of his brothers. Amen? You ever known anybody that's messed up and sinned? Probably your neighbor, right? On the left or the right side of your house? <laughs> Not us, right? I think about Joseph, and man, there's power in the patience and the years that he had to hang on to God's promises when he saw no fruit of it. I mean, it's easy to say, praise God, man. Yesterday I got me a job I've been believing for and praying for for years. I mean, it's pretty easy to praise God today after you get a new job that you've been seeking and praying about or whatever it may be, right? But you've got to be able to praise him in the storm when the wind's blowing. The, <laughs> The waves are beating on the side of your boat. you got to be able to trust Him. And now that's easy said, but it's, it's, it's just not quite so easy to, to happen. But patience is what gets us through those storms. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. Now I chose the New King James Version. Uh, Miss Cheryl, I'll pull it up. I sent a picture up there. I'm always ready in see oh there it is. Verse twelve says that you do not become what? How many of you ever been sluggish? How many of you are all sluggish? How many are sluggish when you wake up in the mornings? How many of you are quick risers? You just get up ready to go. Amen. Man, when I get up, I'm ready to go. Allison said, I'm sluggish. She kind of drug it out. I'm not sluggish. When I get up, I'm like, yeah. I get up and get me some coffee, turn on the news right quick. And sometimes, you know, if it's, I got an old buddy named Nelson Reedy, and I'll call him and bug him and hopefully wake him up when I call him. You know, we joke and play around with each other. I call Nelson or something, and, or I'll be studying, doing my devotion before I do it live. And, and when I pop up, man, I'm ready to go. That's my favorite part of the day, early in the morning when I do get up. And I enjoy that little time before I do whatever it is I got to do. But it is easy. Now, let me tell you this. I, many times I get up real early, and when I'm shoeing horses, I work really hard. My back gets tired, man. I'll be, when I get home, I, I, if I take me a 10-minute cat nap, I'm ready to go to 11 o'clock at night. I like just a little bitty nap. I don't always get them. But if I can just lay down for 10, 15 minutes... Now, Allison takes some naps. If she ever does take a nap, she's taking a nap. Amen. It might be an hour, hour and a half. Sometimes I go in there and check her pulse during a nap. <laughs> a little 10-minute nap, man, I can roll. I don't have to have it, but uh, I do get up early. And, but when I get done from doing whatever, if I'm on the phone about the church, sometimes I'll be shooing two or three horses, talking to the secretary, getting posters lined up, what are we going to do about this, what, and we're getting all this done. And when I get home, I'm like, oh, man, I'm a little sluggish for a few minutes. So we all get sluggish. But it says that you become sluggish. Basically, it's saying do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and what? Say it with me. Faith and... So they go together, right? Faith and patience inherit what? And we all want to inherit God's promises, right? I mean, and there's so many promises in the Word of God. We want to receive those promises. But realistically speaking, we got to have faith. We know that. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. But there's an ingredient that goes along with faith called patience. See, patience is what gets you through the hard times. It's, I mean, we love church, right? You know, church is kind of like our, our pep rally. Man, we get fired up, we encourage one another, and we go back out into the world where we are to let our light shine for Christ. <laughs> I mean, church is a spiritual pep rally to encourage us and build us up to go out and be who we're called to be. Amen? But there's times that we can get a little sluggish. Or if we go through a, a dark time in life, faith is exciting. And, it, man, you go to church, your faith is built up. Amen. I talk about some story that, you know, and I, maybe you're like, dang, man, that was good today. I, I thank God, man. That just encouraged me to, to trust the Lord and, 
and, and do this or that. Everybody has a little different story, but God's speaking to our lives through his word all the time. And when we come to church, man, we get excited, but tomorrow morning could be a different story. At some point this week, you're going to be like, Woo, I don't feel quite like I did it at 7.43 last night. I was fired up. I was relaxed. My belly was full, and man, he was preaching God's Word, and it just encouraged me. So patience gets us through those challenging times. Amen? Now, one, one key ingredient, I am not a horse trainer. I told you all that last week. I am a horseshoer. But I'm not a very good horse trainer. I know a few things just from shoeing horses and listening to people, but many... At this point in my life, I don't have the patience I need to train a horse. I'm like, come on, man. You know, I've been, I've been working with you 30 minutes. You ought to be riding around loping circles and all this. It's just, but that's not realistic with a horse. It takes some time. It takes a lot of time, actually. It starts out on the ground with a horse. And, uh, you know, it takes some time with that horse. But with a horse, one, one, one part of their training is, how many of you have ever trained a horse? Or seen somebody do it. How many of you ever heard the term the patience tree or the patience post? Amen? What, what, you, you want me to tell you all what that means? A patience tree many times is where you will. This is old Doc. Man, I love, I love how much food he eats. I wish all my horses eat like Doc. <laughs> We only have two horses, but when you take a young horse and they're fidgety, one of the things you can do is you can tie them to a patience post or a patience tree, and this is not much of a tree, but it's all I could find, and you tie that horse up. I'm going to throw my old fancy slip knot here. And whoosh, my mic don't like getting under the speakers, but we're good. And, and you can tie that horse up, and they learn what? Because that horse, most of the time, is used to getting what he wants. If you think about a, a young horse, especially in a, a nice barn or somebody that really likes it, the first year of its life, it's getting feed slung to it, hay fed to it, free choice, and then its human comes along and scoops up the poop and puts it in a wheelbarrow and takes it out. So the horse is full. And something happens at about two and a half years old or two or three, whenever it is, he is called upon to do something. And with a horse, a lot of times with a young horse, I used to even, I peanut, when I got peanut, she was three years old. And she was quiet. She's five now. She was pretty quiet. I guess she'll be six. Maybe she was two and a half. She was young when we got her. And uh, she was real good, but she wouldn't back out of a trailer. Some little things that we worked on. I don't have time, really. I'm not a trainer. I don't have the time, really, to do what she deserves. But I would take her and, and tie her up. Or even a young horse that you hadn't even started yet, you tie them up to a tree, and it's called a patience tree. There's not a lot going on, but there really is a lot going on. That horse learns patience. Sometimes, uh, used to when I rode horses, I don't ride that much anymore, but if I had a horse that was young and we were going to go rope or do something like that, we would take the young colt and just take him in the trailer everywhere we go. And you take an old finished rope horse and hop him up in a trailer and go to a rope and he don't care if you meet 18 wheelers or what. But watch a two year old when they meet an 18 wheeler. Woo! Boy, that son of a gun, yeah, I mean, they're like, what just happened? But over time, they learn. And so a patience tree is good. Sometimes we have to go to the patience tree. Amen? Let's go to Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through verse 5. Romans 5, we're speaking on patience. Y'all remember last week I said that I tried to trim a horse? And he wanted no part of it. Trimmed his front. I don't do, I don't hardly take any new customers. And my customers, I guess I'm getting soft. <laughs> they got the, pretty much the same horses. They stand good. If you shoe them, you trim them. They're like, you get, most of my horses, you can go down to the, the fetlock right above the hoof and do that. 
What do they do? They pick that foot up for them. And they got some age on them. And so I'm thankful for that. I don't want to wrestle any horses at 52 years old anymore. I'm past all that. But I had a customer get a new horse. Y'all heard about it last week. Raise your hand if you were not here last week so I can tell you about it real quickly. These people buy this horse. It's a nice horse, bred well, trained well, rides good with a saddle on. So I walk up to it, grab the foot like the regular old 15-year-old horse I normally do, 5-year-old, 12-year-old, 20-year-old. And I don't realize how old he is, so he gives a little struggle, and he gives me his foot, and so I trim it. And then I go around to the other side, and on a horse, there's a left brain, right brain. If you're training a young horse and you deal with him on the left side, guess what? When you go to the right side, he remembers nothing <laughs> many times. So I wasn't thinking about it. Go around to the right side, and he starts, Allison held him. Thank God my wife went with me. I almost didn't take I thought, oh, it won't be no big deal. But every now and then, it's a big deal. And she went. And so this, she's holding the horse, and the horse just starts circling us. And I'm walking to him. Now, I do have some chaps on that could have intimidated him. And the horse ran in a circle getting away from me going, whoo, whoo. You ever heard a horse blow? He wanted away. And so we circled a few times. I'm tired. I just did it as a favor. Here I am. I said, Kick him out. <laughs> I don't want to mess with him. You know, number one, that son of a gun would, would have blowed a gasket pretty quick, and we're no match for a horse, so I let him out. And I said, that's what we do, a lot of us. We're, we're fine when the Lord's having us do something we like, but when he asks us or he comes up on us on a different side, let's just say we're comfortable with God over here, and he deals with us, you know, son, I want you to do this, and we... You know, he takes us and he gets us where we can, whatever he's putting on our heart to do. Whether it's help someone, giving, witnessing, whatever. It could be a hundred things. And we get used to God dealing with us over here, right? Then one day God throws you a monkey wrench. And he will do it. He's going to come at you from another direction and say, My son or my daughter, I want you to do this. And we're like, what's God doing over here? And you know what we do? <laughs> and we blow and snort like we've never seen God before. Like he's never spoke to us, but God, you always spoke over here. And sometimes we put God in the box, and about the time you get God boxed up, it's so funny, he'll kick right out of that box and come at you from the other way. And, 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 and boost you out of your comfort zone. And thank you for all those amens, all right? It's quiet out here because we, we're laughing, but we, we've all been there. We were in our comfort zone with Jesus, and boy, did he rock our world. He came up on the other side, and boy, that little horse, man, he was, he was, he was a cat now. I mean, he, was, he was getting away from me. And so what did we have to do? My wife has the good drugs that will put horses to sleep. Oh, well, you can trim that horse unless you want your head kicked off, and I'm not into that. So I thought, well, we've got to do something. So I called my buddy and said, hey, we can come. He said, when do you want to come? I said, I really don't want to come. <laughs> but we'll come. It was yesterday or Monday? It was Monday. So we come over. We'll leave in about 15 minutes. So my wife goes, Look. you know you got a good wife when she's got horse tranquilizer in her purse. <laughs> She don't have to use it much anymore, but she worked at a huge ranch at one time. The ranch she worked at had 268 mares, several studs. She'd collect the studs, artificially inseminate the mares, ultrasound the mares. I mean, she's given more shots and probably as many feet as I've trimmed. So she, she's real good. Now, Clayton can give a shot, too. I've seen him do it. I don't have to deal with the shots. But So Allison comes, and she's, she's got the medicine. And uh, we put this young horse into a stock. You know what a stock is? A stock is basically a metal. You put them in there and put a rope across the front. And they really can't get out, but yet it's just a pipe. There's a little danger there. Some legs can fly. And so Allison eases up to this horse. We don't know if he's ever had a shot or anything. So we, my buddy, he's got a rope, and he's hanging on. And so we put him in the stock, and Allison eases up there and thumps his neck. Right where you give a horse a shot, and you mainline him with that medicine, and it will sedate him to where I can trim his feet. 
So she, she bumps him on the neck, and she barely, he, he, he reminded me of me. Mr. Marvin, she touched that horse with the tip of that needle, and he said, Ooh. I mean, he like tore it stock down. Ran into the back of it, boom. And my buddy wasn't there the day that I tried him. He said, that horse can't be bad. After it was over, he said, dear Jesus, <laughs> I got some work to do. I said, you sure do, because I ain't trimming him again. You get that sucker broke, pick his feet up. But he hit the back of that stock, bam, he was going crazy. And uh, so we finally got a twitch on his nose enough, got it twitched, and we got him a shot. And my buddy had never seen a shot of Demosedan in action. I mean, just bloodstream. So I untie the rope up front, and I lead him out, and he's going... <laughs> He's stumbling around. And he's like, oh, my God, he's going to die. I said, he ain't going to die. And he's out there stumbling around. And so he said, man, I'm going to hold him up over here. So he's, he's holding him up a little bit. I said, he probably ain't going to fall. But, I mean, there's no way you could have done his feet. And I was able to ease around him and trim his feet. But that dude didn't know. He didn't care if bread went to $10 a slice. He didn't know nothing. But we had to drug him, but we was able to trim him. And we don't want to be like that three-year-old coat blowing and snorting after we walk with Jesus for a long time. Amen. And I preach off everyday experiences. Amen. And I think about that horse. And when I look at that horse, no offense, but I could see all y'all. I could see me. It's all of us. Amen. To some extent, we got some area we're still a little, we'll get a little sideways. God, who knows what it is? Who knows what your is? But everybody's got a. We're, we're, we're doing our thing, and then God puts it on your heart to reach out to someone that maybe you don't like. Raise your hand if it's ever happened. I mean, you'd be lying if you didn't raise it. Or God will put it on your heart to go witness to that person. And we might be like Peter. Remember Peter when God said, I want you to preach to the Gentiles? He said, huh. and he said, I want you to eat, eat this meat. What did Peter say? No, not me, God. I don't do that. And God had to work on Peter and make him realize that he was wrong. Can I get a good amen? Did you know in heaven there's no skin color? I mean, God doesn't look at it like that. He created all men. We all bleed red. Can I get a good day? Aren't you glad God doesn't have favorites? Because what if you wasn't his favorite? We think we might be his favorite, but God don't have favorites. I liked it when Brother Mike got up Sunday and said, It's great to have a little pepper in the salt. <laughs> That was awesome. <laughs> but we all have those things that we... Whoa. Yours may be totally different. And God may be dealing with us to do something, and, and we're all going to try to sidestep him a little bit. But don't, don't be like the colt that had to get sedated till he almost couldn't stand up. We want to be quick to obey. Now, we're going to have to spend some time at the patience tree. We've had a few colts through the years that just loved to paw when you tied them up. It's time to a tree limb and say, Paw away, buddy, when you see China, holla at me. They get tired of digging, tired of pawing. And you just got to work with them. Patience, it's time. Everybody say time. All right, therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have what? peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us because of our faith Christ has brought us into the place of undeserved privilege isn't that a blessing where we now stand because of Christ and our faith and we confidently and joyfully look forward to what? sharing let me say that one more time we confidently and joyfully look forward to so how do we do it? We do it confidently and joyfully. When you share Christ, 
let, let, let his joy flow through you. We don't want to witness to somebody and we look like we drink a half a gallon of pickle juice. I mean, we all have bad days, but the more we think about it, we all have. Everybody had a bad day, raise your hand. But you know, you got to go off and you got to talk to yourself. Now, I don't recommend doing it in public, but you got to go off and talk to yourself and say, Self, <laughs> you are blessed. Boy, it's so easy to think negative, isn't it? Golly, boy, we could just do it with our eyes closed. But we got to have, sometimes we got to have our own prep rally. The Bible says that David encouraged himself in, in the Lord. Sometimes we got to have a spiritual pep rally out by ourselves and say, you know what, I am a blessed man. I'm a blessed woman. God has been good to me. Amen. And the more you do that, you'll start seeing things a little bit different. It's a process. Sometimes we got to go to the patience tree for a while. But we encourage ourselves. And, and it says here that we, we to share God's goodness we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing what? God's glory. So we need, our job is to share God's love in our own way. But when we do, we need to make sure that we represent our Lord in a good way. Amen. Amen. Couldn't you imagine if I got up here every Sunday and I talk like this and I developed this monotone voice and I said, okay. We're going to go to Romans chapter 5. And I'm not making fun of how anybody presents it. What I'm saying is, if I didn't have a pep in my step, it's going to make a difference. Amen. I always said, I remember when I got saved in April of 1993, I knew God had a, a plan for my life, and I wanted to preach the gospel. I didn't know nothing about it, but I thought, man, if a, a set of cows will stop long enough, I'll tell them about Jesus. I didn't know nothing, but I had a desire to live for him and to tell other people. And I've done a lot of things in life, but my favorite thing is sharing God's love with people. It's my calling. And it, my calling don't fit everybody. Different bait catches different fish. But our job is to joyfully share his glory. All right, we're out of here. Oh, boy, one minute over. You know it's... Only 7 o'clock in Idaho, right? Verse 3 says, we, <laughs> we can rejoice too, verse 3, when we run into problems. Everybody say rejoice. So we can rejoice when? When we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance or patience. And patience slash endurance develops strength of and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. Can I get a good amen? And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. So we are to rejoice when we run into problems and trials, or we know that they help us develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character everybody has a story everybody's been through something can I get a good amen we all have I know me personally I can only speak for myself I've been through some crazy stuff stuff that a lot of people would have quit you've been through stuff that you almost quit how many of you ever thought about quitting before in your how many years you've been on this earth we all have but you know what? There's something in us when we know Christ that keeps us pushing forward. And just when I was discouraged and became an old usher, nothing wrong with a good usher. I ushered at a big church in Lufkin. They didn't know me from a man on the moon. I went back to that church a while back. I shouldn't even say this. And preached a service. They did not know I was a preacher. 1,100 member church. I preached a service and they came to me and said, we had no idea. <laughs> said, you was, you was the guy that ushered here, right? I said, yeah, taught Financial Peace University. But I was happy where I was. All I want to do is serve him. Whatever he wants me to do. God resurrected my life and my ministry gave me a wonderful wife. She'll go give a horse a shot so I don't get my head kicked off. She'll rub my back at night if it hurts. 
she's ride or die. But we love each other. I wouldn't have her if I had any quit in me. You don't know all my story. I don't know yours. It don't make no difference. But I wouldn't have her if I had any quit in me. Keep pushing for Jesus. And look at now. Two little old men invited me to come to Beulah. And then James asked me to come fill in. I said, I'll fill in one Sunday. He said, all right. Then Mr. Charles. Mr. Charles, I think he knew something. Because he came to me. He was an elder then. And they got me in a room and said... Now, you're going to be back in two weeks, right? <laughs> Mr. Charles had that walking stick, and I don't know. He kind of pulled it up. <laughs> I'm just joking. But anyway, faith and patience, you'll inherit the promises. Keep plowing no matter what's going on. Love you guys. I got you for three and a half minutes. <laughs> Y'all just sitting there like we're going to keep going to church. Y'all don't do that another 30 seconds now. <laughs> hey, let's pray us out of here. Lord, thank you for this day. Watch over each one of us. Protect us. Let us shine for you and be a light for you. We love you, Lord, and thank you for letting us come together and have great services and have fun, but love you, Lord, and put you first. Amen.